Today we're reading National Geographic Kids Rosa Parks. The AR quiz number for this book is 175529. Who was Rosa Parks? Can you imagine a world where white children could ride a school bus every morning, but black children had to walk? Can you imagine a world where black people couldn't drink from the same water fountains as white people or sit with them on a city bus? This world was real and it happened in the United States. There was a time when black people had to use separate back entrances to movie theaters and restaurants. Some white people felt they should be treated better than black people. Segregation laws were used to give more rights and a better life to white people. Rosa Parks helped change these unfair laws by thinking and acting. She stood up for herself and others her whole life. In her own words, if I did not resist being mistreated, I would spend the rest of my life being mistreated. Growing up, Rosa Parks was born as Rosa Louise McCauley on February 4, 1913 in Tuskegee, Alabama. She lived on a farm with her parents and grandparents. She was a small, quiet girl. She loved to read nursery rhymes and fairy tales like Little Red Riding Hood. She also helped take care of her little brother, Sylvester. Rosa's grandparents were born as slaves. They taught her that all people deserved fair treatment. When Rosa was a child, slavery was over, but white people still had more freedom than black people. Like the people pictured here, all black Americans were free in the 1920s. However, unfair laws made their lives difficult. One day when Rosa was 11, a white boy pushed her. She pushed back. The boy's mother told Rosa she would go to jail. Rosa stood up for herself. She told them she didn't want to be pushed. That's a fact. To help her parents pay for school after sixth grade, Rosa cleaned classrooms in the afternoon. When she was 11 years old, Rosa moved to Montgomery, Alabama to attend this school, the Montgomery Industrial School for Girls. In her time, when Rosa was a girl in the 1920s, many things were different from how they are today. Transportation. White people and black people paid the same price to ride the bus, but they didn't have the same rules. White people could sit up front, but black people had to sit in the back. Money. A chocolate bar cost three cents. Today it cost about $1.35. U.S. Events. In 1920, women were allowed to vote for the very first time in U.S. history. Toys and fun. Children played games like marbles and kick the can, which is similar to hide and seek. School. Many black children in the southern United States went to school only six months a year because they had to work in the fields to help their families. For the same reason, most black children didn't go to school past the sixth grade. Standing up for civil rights. When Rosa was 19 years old, she married Raymond Parks. They lived in Montgomery. She got a job as a seamstress in a department store. She sewed clothes to fit customers. Like the people in this photo, Rosa Parks helped black people sign up to vote. There were many challenges. Parks herself tried three times before she was allowed to sign up to vote. Rosa Parks also worked to spread the word about civil rights. She attended meetings, rallies, and marches. She taught young people how to stand up for themselves. She helped people who were hurt by those who did not believe in civil rights. Standing up for civil rights was not easy, but Parks never gave up. That's a fact. Between 1945 and 1955, some Montgomery bus drivers wouldn't let Parks ride because she had a habit of refusing to give up her seat to white people. A seat on the bus. On the night of December 1st, 1955, 
Parks took the bus home after work. She sat down in the seat in the middle of the bus. Parks riding a bus in Montgomery. After a few stops, the bus grew crowded. The driver asked Parks to stand so a white man could sit. She thought about the unfairness she faced all her life. She felt she had as much right to sit in the seat as anyone else, no matter the color of her skin. This diagram of a bus shows where Parks was sitting on the night of December 1st, 1955. Parks looked the driver in the eye. In a quiet voice, she answered, no, in her own words. I didn't even know if I'd get off the bus alive. This is the bus Parks rode on December 1st, 1955. She must have been scared. Black people had been arrested for refusing to give up a seat on a bus. Some had even been hurt or killed for doing the same thing people on the bus, black and white, feared what would happen. Black and white passengers on a city bus. The bus driver called the police. The police arrested Parks. At her trial, the court found her guilty of breaking a state segregation law. She was forced to pay a fine. In her own words, People always say that I didn't give up my seat because I was tired, but that isn't true. No, the only tired I was, was tired of giving in. She faced the police many times as she fought for civil rights. This photo is from one such arrest. That's a fact. When the police officer told Parks he was going to arrest her on the bus that day, she replied, you may do that. Word spread about what had happened. Parks Act inspired people to stand up for fair and equal treatment. Black leaders asked people to protest unfair rules by taking part in a bus boycott. A young preacher named Martin Luther King Jr. made a speech. He urged people to stick together. It was not easy for people to get to work in other places without the bus. But people kept the boycott going. It lasted more than a year. Finally, the Supreme Court ruled that everyone had the same rights on buses. People boycotting the buses waved to an empty bus driving by. Seven cool facts about Rosa Parks. Parks was not the first black person to refuse to give up a seat on a bus, but her actions sparked the famous bus boycott that helped change the unfair laws. Parks was part Native American. In Montgomery, Alabama, you can visit the bus stop where police arrested Parks. In 2012, President Barack Obama sat on the bus Parks was riding when she refused to give up her seat. The bus is on display at the Henry Ford Museum in Detroit, Michigan. Today, a statue of Parks stands in the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C. When Parks died in 2005, bus drivers in Montgomery and Detroit honored her by reserving their front seats. Many people call Parks the mother of the civil rights movement. Courage. Parks paid a price for protesting. After her arrest, Parks and her husband lost their jobs. Angry people threatened them. Finally, in 1957, they left Montgomery and moved to Detroit. In 1965, Parks took a job with a black congressman named John Conyers. For the next 20 years, she worked in Conyers' office. Parks continued to stand up for civil rights. 
She attended meetings and peaceful protests. She even helped black people fight unfairness in other countries like South Africa. Parks, protesting South Africa's unfair laws. Remembering Rosa Parks. Many people know about Parks' life because she refused to give up her seat on the bus that day in 1955. But now you know, she spent her whole life standing up for fair treatment. That's a fact. In 1996, President Bill Clinton awarded Parks the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Rosa Parks Timeline 1913, born on February 4th in Tuskegee, Alabama. 1924, moves to Montgomery, Alabama to continue school. 1932, marries Raymond Parks. 1955, refuses to give up her seat on a bus and sparks a famous boycott. 1956, U.S. Supreme Court rules that segregation on buses is unlawful. 1957, moves with her husband to Detroit, Michigan. 1965, takes a job with Congressman John Conyers. 1996, awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom at the White House. 1999, named one of the top 20 most important people of the century by Time Magazine. 2005, dies on October 24th at age 92. 2006, remembered with a statue in the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C. 2013, U.S. Postal Service creates a stamp in Park's honor on what would have been her 100th birthday. Rosa Parks died on October 24, 2005 at age 92. After her death, she was given great honors like the ones presidents and soldiers receive. Quiz whiz, see how many answers you could get right. Number one, segregation laws. A, made sure kids went to school. B, made sure all people could vote. C, kept black people and white people apart. D, kept people from driving too fast. Number two, where was Parks born? A, Alabama, B, Michigan, C, Washington, D.C., or D, South Africa. Number three, Parks' grandparents, A, died before she was born, B, were born as slaves, C, lived in a mansion, D, owned a department store. Number four, Parks stood up for civil rights by A, helping black people sign up to vote, B, attending meetings, rallies, and marches. C, teaching young people how to stand up for themselves. D, doing all of the above. Number five, what did Parks do when the bus driver asked her to stand? A, she gave up her seat and stood. B, she stayed in her seat to protest. C, she got off the bus and walked. D, she tied herself to the seat. Number six, what happened during the bus boycott? A, the bus ran out of gas. B, people rode the bus for free. C, buses did not run. D, people did not ride buses. Number seven, why did Parks and her husband move to Detroit? A, they wanted to retire. B, she needed to care for her mother. C, she wanted to return to her hometown. D, they lost their jobs and were threatened. And now words to know from this book. Boycott, the act of refusing to use a service as a way to protest it. Civil rights, the rights of all people to be treated equally inspire to cause someone to want to take action peaceful without fighting or arguing protest to say you don't agree with something segregation 
the act of keeping a group apart from others.